Yeah, welcome back and uh, let's uh, get into that and a whole lot more. It seems a lot of conversations in the business sector or business arena these days in Nigeria is not very far away from that removal of subsidy and uh, overspilling impact in different areas. Uh, for this morning, let's begin by talking about uh, what the Crude Oil Refinery Owners Association of Nigeria are doing, you know, concerning this. It's a registered association of modular and conventional refinery companies in the country, and they do have a lot to say um, about this uh, to, to see what they are doing and how they can take advantage of the opportunities which the removal of that subsidy has brought. We have joining us uh, virtually from London now, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of OMSA Integrated Services. Uh, he is Mr. Momo Oyarikwa. He's a member of that association and uh, he's here to tell us uh, some of that. Mr. Oyarikwa, thank you for your time and good morning. How are you doing today? Great. Um, great. So first of all, um, I've had a couple of conversations with you know, different groups of people, including some people from the NNPCL, I mean, even before they became NNPCL. And um, one of the notions that they share is that modular refineries are not economic, economical uh, to operate in the country. But I now see you have an association. I think you have about 40 licenses or stuff like that. So try to convince me. How come you are so serious about um, a, a platform or a project or a means which even the NNPCL has said is not economically, economically viable? Anyway, it's, uh, I would liken it to like, you see, when you have not tasted uh, someone others, uh, some other person's mother's food, you always say that the mother's food <laughs> is sweeter than every other food. I think that's the case here. Uh, we are uh, operators, some of us in the co in Koran, uh, uh, Code Oil Refinery Owners Association of, Nide of Nigeria, we are current operators in this um, in this space, and we have seen the benefit that this can obviously bring to the economy. Uh, one of those benefits, like you have mentioned, subsidy, it's uh, what, of course, we can actually close up. The first thing I need to say here is that what is the purpose of we actually exploring crude? The purpose of exploring crude anywhere in the world is to refine it. And what we are currently doing in Nigeria is we are exploring crude and we are actually exporting that crude to other countries of the world to refine and bring back to us to sell. And what modular refinery does in this space is that they are located at wellhead. They are located where the feedstocks are. So they eliminate several costs. They eliminate the cost of even transporting crude oil abroad, the cost of bringing them back, the cost of even the middlemen that make profit out of selling these products. So what Nigeria could benefit by enabling modular refinery is that Nigeria will eliminate all of these costs and will make product cheaper. Today we are talking of subsidy, we are talking of the incremental value of, uh, of PMS, which is uh, what we call petrol. I mean, if modular refineries, if they've been supported, like I've said, having them in all where and all areas where crude are being produced, what will happen is that that price will drop. And how is that, how is that price supposed to drop? Like I have just said, I mean, it's by eliminating all costs, all middle costs, and all of that. And secondly, it will also help to grow the economy. It's going to create a whole lot of employment. And number three, is going to also eliminate the theft of, of our crude oil, of Nigeria crude oil, because what is going to happen is that you have a situation where you have refinery located close to where oil is being produced. Today, there are several pipeline issues in Nigeria, pipeline breakage, theft of the products, and all of that. So if you have modular refinery located just like our refinery, uh, my company that I currently chair, we are co-located with an oil producing company. And what they do, we just have a 400 meter pipeline into our refinery and we produce. And who do we produce it for? We produce it for the Nigeria people. And they get it at cost price without any other cost. 
included. But the issue is that we have not had enough supply of crude oil for us to refine for a country that actually produces crude oil. So this is the challenge. All right. All right, Mr. Akro. Um, I believe it was that easy. A lot of people will be, will be into that business. So uh, let's get into the details of the operations of Modular Refinery. For instance, how much can it refine, which I think is one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people believe it's not economically wise to engage in it, because you still have to deal with the issue of insecurity, getting the parts, running the machine, um, the refinery themselves, and yet it doesn't, it cannot handle a huge quantity. And you still have to transport it away from there, even after you have refined it. Okay, thank you once again. I Okay, the modular refinery, like we have just, uh, like I have just said, uh, conventional refinery are meant to start for any refinery that's from 30,000 uh, barrels and above, is meant to be a conventional refinery. And while any refinery that is below that uh, is meant to be a modular refinery. So what we're seeing here, when you say the volume, um, I mean, how much can we actually uh, refine? If you have, perhaps, let's assume today we have about 40 companies that are registered to own modular refineries in Nigeria. If you have 40 modular refineries around Nigeria, what is going to happen? Let's assume they have an average refining capacity of 10,000 barrels. That means you have about 400,000 uh, refining capacity. And this capacity mostly will be around where crude oil uh, is being produced. So what that turns out to is that we're going to have the ripple effect of this refined product. Currently, like our refinery and most modular refinery that are currently in operation in Nigeria, they produce diesel, they produce naphtha, they produce uh, uh, fuel oil, they also produce kerosene. And you can also treat naphtha to now become uh, to become uh, PMS, which is the gasoline that we're talking about. So, uh, but the, the cost of having additional uh, reformer to now produce uh, petrol, it's actually very high. That is why you have seen most of the modular refineries are in operation today. They don't have reformers attached to their refinery. And outside of that, because of the uh, regulation of uh, uh, petrol before now, it wasn't economically viable for anybody want to want to go into that venture. I'm sure now that uh, the uh, that petrol has been deregulated, you might not have some of us thinking of going into attaching reformers in for the production of uh, PMS. So what I'm saying is that the effect of you having 40 modular refinery established in the country the country will be awash with petroleum products. You will not have issues of, oh, products are not being delivered on time or there is scarcity of product and all of that. Because what will happen is that this product will be produced in country and everything that we require in petroleum products, including associated gas, will be available in country. We don't need to import any of this product. The effect of that is that we will also save the foreign exchange that we are currently using to import petroleum product into the country, because this is also mounting excessive pressure on our foreign exchange. So this is the advantage, part of the advantage that modular, having modular refinery in the country will actually help to, to, to solve. And also, if you go into some of uh, the countries outside of Nigeria, what you find out is that they have small unit refinery. Building gigantic refinery is not what solves the problem of any country. Because if that refinery has a challenge, what happens? There should be competition within the environment. And that will also drive down prices. So these are some of the few things that modular refinery, establishing or having modular refinery can actually help to solve in the country. All right, so about 30 companies have already been given the license to start uh, modular refineries. And now you're talking about funding uh, at a time when the country itself is broke. Where do you expect such funding from? Okay, uh, part of what we have said is not for the country to provide us with funds. I mean, sometimes there could be guarantees. There could just be guarantees to companies 
which the companies can obviously use to attract funding in, 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 into this industry. For example, in our own case, I mean, we did not fund our refinery 100%. I mean, we had foreign partners who were ready to bring equipment into, uh, into the venture. And this equipment was like an equity in what we have. And this is what some of the modular refinery owners are saying, that if there could be some guarantee, for example, there are some of our members who really want to, I mean, they have gone into, uh, they have done their feed and all of that, they are seeking funding. But there is not even assurance that there is gonna be crude oil supply to their refinery. All they just require is just an assurance from either the authority that they will supply crude to the refinery when the refineries are built. Just in our own case, for about we have installed about 10,000 barrel uh, uh, refining capacity. In the last one year plus that we have come on stream, we've not been able to refine up to 10,000 barrels because the crude is not even made available to us. We don't have the crude to refine. So the refinery is there. If not for pillar oil that have been assisting us to supply us with about a thousand five barrels, the refinery would have just been there. Nothing would have been happening. So but these licenses, these licenses were given to you by the government, the regulator. Yes. So yes. at that point, wasn't it necessary to have like an agreement, knowing that you can only get the crude, which is your raw materials from the government? Wasn't it necessary at that point to to talk about how you are going to stay operational? Yeah, before now, the law that established the modular refinery, if you go to some of the DPRO laws, says that government will supply minimum 60% of the crude that will require, that you require to run modular refinery in the country. But you need, you need to now, after uh, establishing modular refinery, you as a company need to now push the government to ensure that the supply comes. Because nothing, you will not just establish and they give you the 60, the 60,000, uh, sorry, 60% of your requirement. So also in the PIAB, there is domestic, uh, there is a domestic obligation for crude supply. But all of these, they have not been activated because we keep engaging uh, the government institutions or government agencies that are meant to provide us with this, but it's not being done. But I mean, when you go to them, when you have this conversation, what happens is that, oh, I mean, for me, I see it as sleep service because nobody is saying no to you, nobody is saying yes to you. So you're just at the middle. So I think these are some of the challenges that our members are facing. All right. They are afraid because they have seen some of us that have also installed this refinery and the activity is low. For example, a do refinery, for example, is, they currently have a thousand uh, barrel refiner, a refinery installed. Just to have a thousand barrel refinery, uh, Crude oil has been a challenge until recently. They have to engage uh, uh, a private uh, pr producer of food for them to be able to to, to, to right. even start it. All right, Mr. Yankore, uh, we need to go, but I just need for you to answer this uh, very fast. How do you yeah. hope to compete with the giant Dangote, which is supposed to begin supplying refined oil next month? Please briefly. Yeah, the market is actually different because, like I said, we have a niche market. We uh, Some refiners are located in Delta, you know, where and all of that. So we take care of our catchment area. There are about five states and all of that that are very close to us. So all the product they will require will come out of our refinery because right. this area right. is where we are located. Okay, your catchment area. Thank you so much, yes. Mr. Momo Oyarikwa, the Chief Executive Officer of Omsa Integrated Services for sharing your plan as a modular refinery owners with us this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's take a break. When we come back, guess what? Some people have promised us cheap petrol. How will they make it work? We'll find out after the break. Just stay with us.